We're talking about a wide variety of threats. High altitude supersonic bombers, low altitude missiles, surface to surface missiles, and surface to air missiles. We have to be able to stand off and shoot at those guys. We have to be able to get in and protect that strike group. It takes a big airplane, it takes a big missile, it takes a lot of range. It takes these things in order to handle the problem. We know some airplanes, if they're going fast, they're not going to be able to turn with you real fast. If, they, if they're, they're going slow, we know that they can turn, but they can't accelerate. Uh, there's no room for error. The decisions must be made now, and they must be made correctly. Otherwise, you miss the target, and you lose the war. Ask a fighter pilot what kind of fighter he'd like to have. And any pilot who's been around has to ask you first, what do you want me to do with it? Because if you want him to tangle with some guys at 40,000 feet over the airfield, that's one kind of airplane. If you tell him the enemy is four or 500 miles away and he has to go through AAA or SAM fire to get at him, that's another kind. If you want him to handle a Mach 3 overflight at 80,000 feet or defend against a coordinated attack by enemy bombers, electronic jammers and cruise missiles, that's a different system again. The problem is, we don't have the luxury of an airplane for this and an airplane for that. And even if we did, what are the odds of getting the right airplane to the right place at the right time? So the need is for an aircraft that can fulfill many roles, that can meet the threat as it is and is projected for the future. An interceptor compatible with command and control systems, but also able to go it alone and capable of long-range detection, tracking, and multiple target intercept. There's just one airplane that can do that kind of job, without exception. The only really new fighter interceptor in the world today, the F-14 Tomcat. The thing that separates the F-14 from all other tactical aircraft flying today is the combination of a high-performance airframe and the multi-shot, multi-target AUG-9 Phoenix weapon control system, the most significant advance in weapon system technology in a generation of fighter development. Practically immune to electronic countermeasures, the Phoenix missile is specifically designed to destroy multiple maneuvering high-speed targets from extremely long range to close in. And it's the only air-to-air -air radar missile with a launch and leave mode. The Phoenix has proven its performance time and again against a variety of targets in a variety of tactical situations, scoring an unprecedented 85% success rate. Unlike any other system, up to six Phoenix can be fired at six different targets at the same time. Up to 24 targets can be tracked simultaneously. Other new fighters, on the other hand, are restricted to one-on-one -on -one engagements. Once the pilot or the crew has determined they're going to attack a target, they are stuck with that target. They can't see anything else. So he has to stay in search. He's back to a manual system, the same thing that the F-4 came out with 15 years ago. This is the only system we've got going where you can attack a target and not have to devote your full attention to that target for the full time of flight of the missile, whatever you're firing. We can prepare ourselves to uh, take on the rest of the threat. It's one of a kind thing. No matter how sophisticated, no weapon system can get the job done unless you have time to deploy it. And this means early detection. A high-powered radar and extremely fast digital computer provide the F-14 with almost three times the detection volume of current fighters at 30 to 50% greater range. But this is no numbers game. Extended range means more time to respond, up to two extra minutes for a Phoenix to intercept a Mach 2 threat. The difference, perhaps, between winning and losing. It also gives you the ability to stand off and fire a Phoenix missile before being detected or 
before the enemy can launch a weapon, since he has to get a lot closer to fire. Because we get to see him first, uh, we're going to get a cut right there. We're going to get the edge right there. Here we are standing off, uh, having the standoff capability to fire and uh, attack a target when we have come nowhere close to him being able to do that to us. Okay, what happens then? Your survivability goes up tremendously. You take one aircraft and he can do the job of five, six, seven, eight, a dozen aircraft. Let's face it, if you can get a guy at 100 to 150 miles, that's where you want to get him. You don't want to wait till you have to get him in close. Flying low has long been a simple but effective means for getting in under defensive radar networks unable to see over the horizon. The tactic was used successfully in Korea and Vietnam, and more recently by other pilots for other reasons. Now, cruise missiles have taken the art of treetop flying a step further. Launched from air, surface, and undersea platforms, these self-guided weapons present a new threat to air defense systems. Within the state of the art, only long-range airborne radar can pick up the low flyer in time to protect land targets and surface traffic. And only the F-14 has the system to carry out an intercept. We have the capability to look down and shoot down and shoot down most effectively uh, with a very good probability of kill. It goes past that because it gives you the capability to stay at high altitudes and if you can stay up there, you not only then have the capability of attacking the low guy, now I also have the capability of going after the high guy. And that's the other side of the coin, from defending against targets 50 feet above the surface to defending against 70 or 80,000 foot high Mach number aircraft and air-to-surface missiles. There's only one aircraft in the world today that has that capability, and that's the F-14 with the Phoenix missile. What you've got to like about the F-14 is that its performance just begins with a Phoenix factor. Medium-range Sparrow and short-range Sidewinder missiles are also part of the armament package, along with an internal Gatling gun and a versatile air-to-ground system. The thing can cover the whole threat, and that's what you really need when you're going out there to do the job. It's uh, almost a self-contained GCI interceptor fighter combination that can take the fight to any scenario, any place in the world. I deployed with VF-1 and 2 uh, on the Enterprise, and uh, we used to simulate uh, very realistic scenarios. Uh, for example, backfire bombers flying at 50 to 55,000 feet at supersonic air speeds uh, with lower fighter cover. We went out on exercise after exercise like this with the F-14 and demonstrated time and again that because of the two men in the airplane, because of our ability to handle the ECM problem, we can shoot those bombers at long range, still have the short range weapons to get in and visually engage the fighters, take care of them, and press on about our business. In this age of automation, the tendency is to put everything you can into a computer, for certainly computers have taken us over hurdles we never could have handled otherwise. But there are limitations, as we all know. Thus, the F-14, though highly automated, with a computer system that can process three times as much information as any other fighter, still relies on a two-man crew working together to take full advantage of the enormous potential of the aircraft. There has to be tactical decisions made by an air crew. It cannot be done by a black box. It has to be made in the human element involved. The advantage of not having to split yourself down the middle or whatever percentage you've got uh, when you're in a tactical environment. With two guys working on the solution, you're going to come out with the right answer more often than you are with one. That's all there is to it. It's that simple. It's a beautiful combination. And uh, I know in, in my past experience, there's uh, the first guy to see the other guy has a hell of an advantage. With the tremendous flow of information that passes between the F-14 and the command center, Voice communication is often inadequate, too slow, or tactically undesirable. You can get more information back and forth more quickly with the aircraft's data link system, relaying tactical information and receiving additional target data from the command center. 
Even when the enemy is fanned out 200 miles across the sky at different altitudes, the F-14 can be positioned for optimum tactical effectiveness. And it's the only aircraft that can shoot down four of the enemy and still have fuel left for a protracted fight one-on-one. -on -one. The nice part about the F-14 is that you got the best of both worlds. You can get into the dogfight role without taking one iota away from the very significant capabilities in the long-range interceptor role. Wing Wing buys an awful lot. It gives you an awfully good on-station loiter time. It gives you a tremendous turning aircraft, and it gives you a slow approach speed. Throughout the flight regime, and almost at any store loading you'd care to dream up, you decide where you want to go, and you point the nose, and the airplane goes there. It's going to be an awful long time before anyone can come close to finding an aircraft that can take the interceptor role and the fighter role and come any closer to optimizing the two in one, one aircraft. The nice part about the whole system is that being computer-based, software-oriented, the growth potential in the system is almost unlimited. Currently under evaluation is a TV sighting system that can differentiate between airplane types and provide positive target identification at distances tenfold over the unaided eye. A new compact computer is also being developed for long-range positive all-weather target identification. In addition, the aircraft is being equipped with a reconnaissance pod, which will enable one F-14 to handle both reconnaissance and interceptor roles, a unique self-escorting weapon system. Among other growth items are greater ECM capability and a Phoenix missile with better performance against surface targets, increased immunity against jamming, and a programmable logic that will keep the missile up to date against future threats without redesign. It's an ongoing process of development and refinement, tailoring an already formidable weapon system by taking advantage of its inherent growth potential, system flexibility, and new technology to stay one long step ahead of the threat. The F-14 Tomcat, a superior air defense interceptor for today and well into the 1990s.